Nope, two seconds. Oh. All Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another week of the Drunken Under Quarantine Show, brought to you by the Wall and Mill Comedy Club. I am Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming, and tonight we are bringing you the very special Election Eve episode of the show. Uh, and, it, and it could get interesting. We'll see. Uh, with all hopes out there, we won't get our stream pulled. So uh, we're going to talk about some topics tonight. We're going to talk about Lady Gaga and her super cringe ad uh, trying to promote Biden. We're going to talk about a lady in New Hampshire who might be my own hero, who went into the, uh, her police database and managed to get her own charges dropped, uh, which is incredible. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that the White House went into lockdown today. We're going to talk about the fact that uh, this was the election eve episode of the show and uh, no guests wanted to be any, have any part with it and uh and then we're gonna play a little game where i read off some uh quotes from uh vice president biden and president trump and we are gonna see uh what the boys think uh we're gonna take a tally and see who wins and uh hopefully colin can make a comeback on this one because uh gw stomped him pretty bad last week uh so without further ado uh bring you our first entertainer uh bringing to the spotlight stage mr colin doyle colin how was your week good evening gentlemen broadcasting here from eaglewood and bright and freezing cold bridgewater vermont my week was good it's great to be with you gentlemen here election eve uh for those of you who are concerned you might have heard in the news there um was recently uh a man, um, manhunt. Uh, there was a gentleman who got pulled over in Bridgewater. Uh, and uh, when the cops went to, you know, talk to this man, they found out that there was a warrant for his arrest. And the man decided to run from the cops. He ran from the Bridgewater cops. Now they're trying to charge him with attempted murder. <laughs> I like I love the idea of like the guys like in Bridgewater like getting like a the call on someone like being like the only way like they're gonna arrest him is if this guy decides to like buy donuts around the same time that like like these guys do, you know? <laughs> like if it was me, uh I would just, you know, just avoid basically any places that are selling donuts, you know, because you know that that's the that's what they're thinking, you know. They're like, all right, guys, uh you go over, you take Rutland. I'm going to take Dunkin' Donuts and Queechy. I'm just <laughs> sit there. If that son of a bitch shows up, though, I'm going to arrest him. I promise you that. Um, tonight, uh, I'm not going to get uh, political, though. Um, you know, I think we've all had enough politics, so I'm going to try to not talk about anything political this evening. Don't you think it was strange how Donald Trump ended up deciding to, like, basically say that Hunter Biden was... Uh, uh, basically, Donald Trump makes the argument that Hunter Biden is only successful because of his father and wouldn't be rich if it wasn't for his father, which is a really strange argument for Donald Trump to make. <laughs> you know, it's like he, he inherited a lot of money from his father. If I was Donald Trump, I would go after Hunt and like not like try to make fun of him, but like try to like buddy up to him, you know, like be like. Look, I gotta be honest, Hunter. When I see you, I see a young me. I see a young man confused, uh, only successful because of his father. And um, just like take him under his wing, you know what I mean? It's like, you like cocaine? We all do, we all do, you know? Then when he sees like Joe Biden, he could be like, you know, I gotta be honest with you, Joe. We all know Hunter loves me more than he does you. <laughs> we all know it. We all know it. Hunter loves me more than you. He's like my fifth child from a fourth ma marriage, you know? <laughs> what else has been going on uh, this week? Um, uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah. Did our, uh, did a show? at the mill this past weekend. That was, uh, that was nice. It's nice to be um, back indoors performing uh, because I think we can all agree uh, this year 
uh, performance has just become really strange. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's uh, for some reason, uh, you know, comedy just doesn't s seem to feel the same way when it's performed on a, on a stoop, like a stoop. <laughs> like on a stoop, you know? <laughs> Something about a ceiling that makes everything funnier. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, GW, I'm going to kick it over to you, buddy. Uh, how you feeling? I feel like warmed over dog shit. That's that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> I uh, hurts to laugh at. <laughs> yeah, I I um, I've had my share of medical issues this past week, and let me just tell you, COVID testing sucks. I don't know if you've ever had to do it, guys, but uh, yeah, it blows dick. It basically, they take this long spear, plastic spear, and sh literally just shove it like right into your brain cranium. Like, like, I I felt that thing twitch in the eyeball. Like, like that's how deep it was. It was deeper than uh, Wong John Dong in a porno. <laughs> like, it was so long. Kobe Bryant was having sex with it. Like, uh. It was so long. Very other jokes about black guys' penises are involved. <laughs> that that's how long it was, and hard. Um, but good news, I don't have COVID, so Ooh. so that's a bonus. I uh, I'm not down with the corona, but they don't know what is wrong with me. Um, which. <laughs> It's kind of one of those things where it's like, wait, you only have like two tests that you can perform. And if both of those tests come back negative, you just go, I don't know. <laughs> like, I understand we're not that far from leeches and sawing off limbs, but I figured like there is some sort of, I don't know, progression of testing that you could do for viruses. Like if you can figure out if I have a common cold or not, you can figure out what the fuck is wrong with me, but apparently not. Um, I, uh, I, I am a little pissed at it because I, um, my whole body has broken out into a rash now, which is not fun. Um, I, it looks like I have fruity pebbles all over my body, different colors, raised bumps, like, it, it, I'm, I'm just waiting for like Fred Flintstone to come and do a promo about my body being so milky white and, and with the, all the colors um, that that's, that's yeah. It, and it's painful too. And like, I can't stop scratching myself. I feel like a crackhead. Like, just give me one more hit, boss. Just give me one more hit. I'm, come on, come on. I'm good for it. I'm good for it. Just, just uh, it, it's, it's fucking awful. And the worst part about it is I was supposed to be on the Woolen Mill show with you guys, and I couldn't make it because I was sick. And I didn't want to be a dick and give everyone else a potential virus. So, and, and that would, would have been my first time performing in seven months. So I forgot what it's like to bomb. And I really wanted to know what that feeling was again. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it for my week in a nutshell. Um, other than I'm I'm getting straight A's in college. Yeah. 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 That that was a first for me. Uh, I've never gotten straight A's in anything in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it was kind of like one of those like the slacker kid in me is like, dude, come on. We don't have to do shit for the rest of the semester and we still pass. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got. Let's turn it back over to Hickory. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm glad that you're uh, you're doing okay and that you don't have the uh, you don't have the COVID. That's uh, uh, I'm going to share a quick little clip so we can get right into the show. Uh, this is a little one I like to call. Whoever's got the money has got it in the bag. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hicker at the Drunken Underwhelming. I'm going to yeah. show you a minor feat here. Uh, it starts with a brown paper bag. Show you that there's. Well, thought there was nothing in there. 
on my first trick, I made a four pack disappear. <laughs> That's the pre show preparation. Make sure that's still on. There we go. Uh, now, what I will do is take just a plain white napkin here. Uh, we're going to put that in there. And uh, make that vanish. So there's that. That's cool. And the last bit is... Uh, I'm going to take just a single coin. I'm going to take that. So to recap, we folded up, balled up a brown paper bag. Balled up a napkin, made that disappear. Made a coin vanish. Now... <coughs> This little magical effect is like an ogre. Because ogres have layers. <laughs> Let's see what was originally an empty brown paper bag. That was a white napkin. Balled up white napkin. What happens? Fold that napkin. And that coin huh. was inside the napkin. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming. See you next time. Oh, it's just a quick one this week. I wanted to save room for the action. But yeah, I like to refer to that as whoever's got the money has got it in the bag, which is a uh, metaphor for our political system in this country. But I would like to say thank you guys for joining me on the show for another fun week. Thanks for uh, having us for another fun week. And uh, first off, we'll get into, uh, and I know G-Dubs, you've seen it, Colin, you might not have, but Lady Gaga put out a uh, pro-Biden piece, uh, about a 45 second video this week where uh, she decided to dress up in uh, in, uh, in camo pants and a, a camo t-shirt tied off at the belly with a camo hat on. And she had some type of uh, like motocross. Uh, I'm assuming they were motocross boots. Somebody out there can correct me. I've been wrong before. Um, and she basically did an ad where she was leaning up against a big ass truck and she pops a beer and she talks about how she's voting for Biden as a vote for America. And after she gets done with her, her 35 second speech, she takes like one minor sip off this can, crushes it in her hand and just throws it on the ground, which, um, which showed me how out of touch Lady Gaga is with the standard American voter. Uh, because I, for one, uh, am abhorrent to alcohol abuse like that. Um, <laughs> but I figured you guys might have an opinion on that. Um, the, the, what I, I don't care who anybody's voting for, but the blatant <laughs> trying to appeal of the woman who wore the meat suit dressing as a redneck uh, was offensive to me as a redneck. And uh, G-Dubs will swing it to you first. Uh, what was your opinion on this fine piece of, uh, fine piece of media? My, uh, my first thought is my culture is not a costume. <laughs> uh, God damn it. It's like she was trying to dress as someone who wants to fuck Steve Austin. <laughs> like, like, oh, I got me a truck, got me some camo, got me a beer. I'm going to fuck me some Stone Cold. Like, and, and Stone Cold Steve Austin and Joe Biden just don't go together. I, I don't care in, in what world you're trying to like play to, but I and and know your base how many fucking rednecks like that actually listen to lady gaga like maybe the chicks but the chicks are probably voting for biden anyways like if you're really trying you know show some titties 
next time. Like, you're trying to swing some votes, show some titties. Like, actually put some real skin into the game, not just play dress up. You could have ran a promo on OnlyFans that was like you'd upload a picture of your ballot with a Biden vote on it and you get free access for a month. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Show me some of that Gaga tape. I'd vote for Biden for that. Colin, what do you think? Well, it was certainly a strange choice. Uh, I guess her initial plan was she was going to go blackface. Um, <laughs> but, but they uh, they couldn't really... Uh, land on a costume that worked for her. So I think um, the idea is it's a it's a bold move. Uh, let's get the Lady Gaga redneck uh, fans, which you know all look like uh, Joe Exotic. You know? <laughs> They're all just like, hey, I'll have it, that truck and drink beer. <laughs> Damn, I do love me some Gaga. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, no. Oh, my Buddha. <laughs> uh, and I don't know where... Um, this this campaign strategy really thought that this was gonna like push him over the top, you know? Like someone had to come into a meeting and be like, listen, Joe, you're trailing with the gay rednecks. Um, we're, we're gonna have to do something bold, <laughs> all right? And he's like, I know, Lady, Lady Gaga sipping beer, that ought to do it. Um, so uh, I actually haven't seen that co commercial because uh, as you know, uh, as you all know, I, I received my news here from the Hickory Drunken Under Quarantine show. So uh, it's always a learning experience. Now, I feel that if she had actually just hammered that whole beer and then smashed it on her forehead, she might have won the over. But uh, anybody who's going to take two sips of a tall boy, uh, <laughs> crush it in their hand and toss it on the ground has instantly it was, lost it was really mind. more damage than it was good. Uh, <laughs> Alcoholics across America were pissed off. I think it would have been better if she actually chugged the entire tall boy, got in a truck, and did a donut. <laughs> I agree, GW. I agree. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to do the redneck thing, you know, don't, you know, commit to it full tilt. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean, drink three tall boy Mike Hard lemonades and drive that fucker into a tree. You know what I mean? Win those votes. All right. It would have been really great if she had a rifle and the gun rack and the truck, you know, it's appeal to all the bases just gets out of the truck and shoots a deer from the road just drives <laughs> off <laughs> i want to know who in the media team procured the truck <clears throat> like like did they take out a a, a google ad or, or or like something from craigslist looking for tall four by four four heavy duty truck <laughs> for a commercial with star <laughs> Yeah, the ironic yeah. part is it was probably one of those trucks that was in one of the Trump train caravans. Yeah. And uh, some guy was like a thousand bucks and all I got to do is take the Trump flag off the back. I'll bring it right over. I was gonna say, it seems to me like it basically like it was just some PA who it was like given $500, went to the Home Depot and was like, truck, 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 truck. Where's the truck? Oh, here's a truck. <laughs> $400. Could we use the truck for a Lady Gaga commercial? <laughs> Uh, we'll move on to our next topic. Uh, we're going to talk about this awesome news story uh, about a woman who was 33. She impersonated the New Hampshire prosecutor to drop stalking and meth charges against herself. Uh, this lady's name is Lisa Landon. Uh, the bullet points from the article, uh, and I read the Daily Mail article because for some reason the UK seems to have less biased coverage on events in America than American media does. Uh, but we're, uh, says Lisa Landon, 33, is charged with one count of false impersonation and six charges of falsifying physical evidence. Landon is accused of submitting falsified documents in three different court cases last November and December using the state's electronic filing system. The woman allegedly pretended to be a prosecutor and faked documents to halt guardish, guardish, guardianship proceedings involving her child. Landon's alleged ruse unraveled after a state forensic examiner raised the alarm. Uh, which is amazing to me. Uh, I'm mildly dumbfounded that there is a way to get into the state's database to do that sort of thing. Um, and I know G Dubs, you use this one for uh, for a school project. So I figured you've read more of it than any of us. Uh, what, what do you think on this lady's amazing use of tact? I I am so incredibly moved by my generation 
and, <laughs> and just the fortitude that we have to do what we deem is necessary in life. <laughs> like, like who the the brass cojones on this woman just to like even attempt to do this. Let, let, let alone do it and and get it done for a little while. But just the thought of, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm just gonna crack into the state database and fix my shit. You know, <laughs> that's good. That's good, right? Yeah, yeah, we got that. Uh, it, just fucking incredible. Yeah, can can you imagine going and and being able to actually get into the database? impersonate a prosecutor and then imagine doing all of that just to get like custody of your shitty kids <laughs> like like you could have used that to like rob a bank or like you know what i mean or like done something that like changed their life or like if you're like hacking into that why don't you just like hack into the bank and like you know what i mean <laughs> but uh but no i did that so uh so i could keep my kids <laughs> like <laughs> or, or maybe who knows maybe i don't have a other case maybe they did it so that she wouldn't have her kids anymore <laughs> seems like, seems like that might be like more motivation uh i felt like it was kind of like the guy in bridgewater right where it was one of those things where if he had just cooperated and and, and dealt with the police in an orderly fashion and dealt with the legal system it wouldn't be that bad but now dude's got like six accounts six accounts of fleeing from police evading arrest uh criminal mischief like the charges just started racking up and uh that's what i felt like she did was she went from from a couple minor charges and now it's she escalated and i meant to say this uh in the beginning of it but um when i was talking about the issue but what i think was absolutely brilliant was uh, the police department local police department put out a statement and they said what are we supposed to do every time we try to arrest him? He runs. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a cop, but I think the terms pursue him. <laughs> Apparently we need to get some of those city police that just tase and pepper spray everybody up here. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm telling you, see how fast you run when there's a, ta a taser attached to your face, you know? <laughs> You you go from a you go from a brisk jog to a pretty slow walk quickly. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about a little bit of election stuff. Uh, the White House is in lockdown right now, and expectations of uh, civil unrest that's going to happen uh, election night and for the next little while until the president's decided. And then who knows what happens after that? I. Um, I know that a lot of Americans out there are nervous and scared and scared and nervous. And I just want to say, uh, make sure you have plenty of beer stashed away because you're probably going to need it reading the headlines for the next couple of weeks. And uh, I, I wanted to get your guys' opinions on what you think might transgress over the next week before we speak again. Uh, do you think we're going to have a lot of crazy shit we're going to talk about next week? Or do you think it's going to be, it's all blown out of proportion and, uh, and really nothing's going to happen? Uh, Colin, we'll start with you first, my friend. Well, um, you know, we've been doing this show for about a half a year. And yeah, generally well. every and generally every week uh, is more insane than the week before. That's been kind of the way. That's a very good point. It's the way it's been for six months. And it's kind of been leading up to this. And this is kind of, if this was a television show, and the television show was called Crazy Fucking Shit That Happens in America Daily, uh, I think tomorrow is probably going to be the season finale. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow specifically or in the days to come, because as we're all uh, curious as, as to the way the, the procedure is, is going because of the mail-in ballots and all of that, there could be some delays. Although I would assume that with the ballots having been mailed in, they should be in a pretty good position of having those been counted be able to count for the votes that are taken tomorrow and hopefully that they get to uh, come up with an answer soon. But um, I really don't know. I mean, I think that I think that this is kind of a funny point in time and that we're like nine months into quarantine 
And people are just now starting to kind of like lose their mind a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like, it's really, I think the fucking hinges are coming off. There was some guy I, I heard about recently just took like a machete or something like that or a big sword and just hacked a bunch of people up or something like that. And people are starting to get a little coming off the wheels a little bit. And so um, I, uh, I would, uh, I would think uh, my prediction is that crazy shit happens this next week. I'm going to double down on the fact that I think that next week we'll talk and I'll say, I said that there was going to be crazy shit, but none of us expected that. I feel like that's kind of been a running theme on the show, actually. <laughs> uh, G-Dubs, what do you think is going to happen this next week? I uh, I think that uh, shit's going to get overblown. I think uh, people are going to protest. Uh, both sides, not not just one or the other. I, th I think there's going to be massive protests either side. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to declare a winner for a while. And both sides are going to claim to say that they're one and neither one will concede. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be a general shit show for the next show, which perfect for us guys. Oh, yeah. We'll have plenty of material to talk about. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, also, do you think uh, this is our long shot bets? Uh, do you think everything's going to be resolved and settled by inauguration day in January? Uh, it's going to have to be. Um, uh, no. So no, it's not going. <laughs> 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 the, the, yeah, it, it needs to be, but no, no, it won't be. Okay. Colin, what do you think on that one? Does anyone really believe we're going to live to January? <laughs> i'd like to think up here in the middle of nowhere vermont yes uh, Does anyone <laughs> i mean i'm just i'm just thinking probably elections november nuclear <laughs> holocaust is december uh january. that would be a great episode 12 of the 2020 show <laughs> yeah the, uh. the, the the hickory under nuclear bombing <laughs> 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 we're uh we're doing this show underneath our desk here from the yes. bridgewater elementary the drunk and underradiated show yeah 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 drunk and under radiation yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> hopefully we don't get to that point but you, you know. know i mean i i i feel like uh i usually am uh i'm usually an optimist too you know but i just feel like this year man is just par for the course right you know um so we'll, we'll, we we shall see. Yeah, it's a it's a mixed bag, and I think nobody knows, which is the scary part. Uh, we'll move on to that. That nobody knows. Uh, I had reached out to four separate people to guest on this particular show, being on election eve, letting them know that we might, you know, talk a bit about politics because it's kind of on everybody's mind and ours and. Uh, I've had four different people tell me that they were burnt out on politics, didn't want to be on the show, but were wondering what the next available date was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of just laughed off and was like, hey, you know what? We'll do a second one with just, just the hosts. And uh, next week we have guests lined up. We have one guest lined up for the next few weeks. Uh, so that'll be good. Um, is it that bad right now? <laughs> Oh, I, I, I would I would have told the people like, uh, oh, you can't do this show. No, we can get you on. How's January 20th work for you? <laughs> 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 like, you know, this is the thing is I think that I think that this presidency in particular, uh, I think that the great um, legacy that that Trump will leave behind is uh, the 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 turning the the presidency into like show business i think it's it's i think it's happened subtly over the last couple of years but i think with trump it's like the final nail in the coffin that it's just like this whole thing's become like reality television like it's just like it's so insane the drama the never-ending drama of everything the the weird thing like he said you know like with the the kim jong-un thing he i watched uh, the bbc had a thing where he was talking about they were going to had some nuclear, they potentially had a nuclear weapon. 
And Trump said, where he famously said, little rocket man is on a suicide mission if he keeps playing with his rockets. And right after he, he said, we'll have no choice but to wipe North Korea off the planet. And he threatened to completely destroy North Korea. Within a week, he said, I'm going to meet with him in Beijing, which no president had ever met with, uh, no one's met with North Korea since, I don't know, maybe the early 50s or 40s. So, um, so it's just the theatrics of it, of saying, offering, you know, in one breath saying you're going to blow them up and then the next breath saying that you're going to meet with them, you know? So I think that it's just, it's very strange of, of uh, navigating things today and the fact that things that are said today and the next day, they could change. And Trump could say that he's not going to leave, but then like he could lose the election and then be like, you know what, I'm just going to leave quietly and I'm done, you know? And, you know, so it's, it's just, you don't know. Which is what I would want to do if I were him, uh, considering <laughs> you have the option to just enjoy your life of riches versus uh, get lampoon or harpooned by the media 24 seven and yeah. uh, be in the public spotlight all the time. I think I would take that option. I was uh, say, side yeah. note to the North Korea thing. He actually walked into North Korea with no security, uh, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, first time that any uh, Americans really done that. But hmm. uh, yeah, he walked into North Korea with nobody just walked through the south-north divide there and met with uh, uh, it was Kim Jong-il at the time, I think. I can't remember. There's too many North Korean evil dictators for me to keep track of. But uh, yeah, he walked in unprotected. Uh, they could have just uh, nagged him right there and that would have been the end of it. But um, the cojones on that guy. Uh, pretty incredible. Uh, G-Dubs, what do you think about nobody wanting to be on the show? Any... Uh, I uh, I don't blame him because I was like, oh god, another politics episode, ah, and I you. have to wear a tie. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, man, it, I get it. Like, I get burnt. Like, I'm I'm watching this stuff all the time. Uh, because I'm a sucker for punishment. Um, and and I get burnt out. It just. And, and I try to be as politically neutral as possible. <laughs> and so like, just just trying to be someone that actually shows true feelings about politics and how they feel towards candidates, it can be so exhausting where I don't give a shit about either one of them. I think they both suck dick. Uh, I would agree you, with that. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. I, I think they're both terrible candidates and 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 this is me being neutral. Like I'm not picking sides. I think they both suck. But, uh, I, I remember thinking back in 2016, God damn it, it's not gonna get any worse than this. Like it cannot get worse than Hillary, the face of the establishment versus Donald Trump, the billionaire reality TV star. And fuck, dude, they one-upped it. Yeah. We, we, yeah. <laughs> We went, we went from the most dislikable dislikable female politician on the planet versus the most unlikable reality TV star we've ever had. And they managed to one-up it. Uh, it was insane. The image of the two of them when it was Hillary and Trump was just like the, just the, the level of ugliness between the two of them was just through the roof. It was like, could you, could you find two uglier people? And <laughs> then the funniest thing is, too, is then you have Hillary who comes on. Hillary is probably the most unelectable politician who's, I think, ever maybe there's ever been. And she'll come on and endorse Biden. Hi, <laughs> I'm Hillary Clinton, and I'm here to enjoy, endorse Joe Biden. What type of endorsement could you possibly be giving Nobody votes for you. <laughs> like the point of an endorsement is that like you would be voting for me, but since you can't vote for me, here's this other person to vote for. Not you would never vote for me. You can't stand me. But here I am. And Joe Biden's the man for the job. I'm like, just get her off television, please. It, it actually reminds me of uh, like just 
the sheer out of touchness that these establishment politicians have to the towards the general people like when they had bill clinton come speak at the dnc and he had the balls to talk about uh how to act in the oval office <laughs> all, I could think, all i could think was like bill i don't know man i don't know if you're the guy to be you know like telling other people what to do uh like that whole that whole uh, Lewinsky under the table thing is still pretty fresh in the mind. Right now, Kyle, I don't know if I'm telling you the right thing to do, but I'm telling you the more fun thing to do. I'll tell you that. <laughs> sure, the policies the policies can always wait. There's always more policies tomorrow. <laughs> hey guys, my uh, my uh, bladder's kicking in. I'll be right back. Absolutely, we'll wait to start the game until you get back, my friend. Uh, tonight's bathroom break brought to you in part by Long Trail. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, everybody, we're not open, but feel free to, you know, buy our beer at the store like everybody else does. Uh, <laughs> we know you miss those Jonah, I mean, trail wings, but uh, you're waiting till spring. That's yes, there. <laughs> no I don't long. know why they don't sponsor the show, you know? I, I, I don't know. This commercial break also brought to you by steak. Because if you're a vegetarian, fuck you. And uh, if you're a vegan, uh, I don't understand why you're watching our show. <laughs> if you're a vegan, that's going to be a double fuck you. <laughs> uh, vegans, the only people I hate just as much as the prohibition part. That's uh, my official political stance. The only official political stance I'm willing to make is fuck vegans and fuck you, Prohibition Party. We want none of your bullshit. GW, welcome back. Yes, what I meant. And uh, oh, we just got a comment in from Jason saying exactly. Uh, I think he was responding to us saying fuck vegans and fuck the Prohibition Party. Because those are the two political stances I'm willing to make. Tonight's show brought to you in part by steak. <laughs> The most delicious bloody red steak you've ever seen. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to get into the game. We got a little game here for you guys. This is going to be fun. So we'll, uh, how the game is going to work is uh, I'm going to read some quotes both from uh, Vice President Biden and President Trump. And uh, we are going to, I'm going to take a little tally. And uh, we're going to, we got 15 quotes, but I think we're going to do like, uh, we'll do like 12. And then depending how we are on the uh, tiebreaker, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, uh, do the rest of them. Uh, so these I pulled, these are all from 2019 and before. So we don't have anything that's like super current and would obviously give it away. You know, they've had time to um, age a little bit. <laughs> and I will say that uh, I may, during the segment for all of our viewers, may use a phrase or two that is, uh, not socially acceptable, but that's just because either Joe Biden or Donald Trump said them. Uh, so I want to get that out of the way. way the president's talk, kids. Yeah. So, uh, so you don't, you guys, <laughs> we don't condone call, the messages. Yeah, that you think that uh, you know, Colin GWI are uh, bigoted in any way. Uh, so we'll start with the first one, and uh, G Dubs will start with you. Uh, this first quote is, <clears throat> and I'm going to try not to put any. Uh, I'm going to read them as myself. I'm not going to try to do any impersonation stuff because that would ruin the game and give it away. So this quote is, I stopped in Singapore to meet with a guy named Lee Kuan Yew, who most foreign policy experts around the world say is the wisest man in the Orient. That's Biden. Uh, you are correct. Biden used the outdated term for Asia when referring to the former prime minister of Singapore during a get out of the vote rally in Iowa in 2014. Just hours earlier, he had apologized for using the term Shylocks to describe unscrupulous lenders. <laughs> I don't know what that's doing. Uh, okay, so Colin, this one's for you. Uh, from Phoenix to Flagstaff, from Mesa to Yuma, to the Red Rocks of Sedona. This great state was settled by some of the toughest men and toughest and most beautiful women ever to walk the face of the earth. I mean, it seems to me like it's got the, the, the poetry of Trump. 
Uh, you are correct, sir. Uh, Trump made the remarks during a visit to Arizona in 2018. Now, Trump added, pointing to reporters, they're going to say tomorrow, he called women beautiful. Isn't that terrible? It'll be, Trump calls women beautiful. Sorry, I'm working on my Trump impression. This is not nearly as good as Collins, but I'm working on it, okay? <laughs> Trump calls women beautiful. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. Beautiful. You always were, and you always will be. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, we're at one and one. Good job. Good for you, Rosie. You're a fat cow. All right. <laughs> Everybody agrees. Everyone uh, agrees. <laughs> uh, I think these will probably get a little tougher as we go along. But okay, G Dubs, back to you. The quote is I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I'd be delighted. <laughs> I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours. Neither one. Oh, the beautiful assistant says neither one. I'll restart the quote. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours, if you'd like, Frank. Uh, I'm going to say Trump on that one. No, sir. First wrong one. That is Biden. Uh, Biden made these remarks responding to a question about his academic record during a campaign stop in New Hampshire in 1987 presidential campaign. Wow. In response, he also misstated his record, saying that he'd received a full academic scholarship to law school, although his campaign later said it was a partial scholarship based on need. Well, um, and I partially went to law school, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to be fair, these quotes are from uh, from Bloomberg, uh, so I am using a source that might be, you know, a little slanted one way or the other, but uh, at least they're credi credible. Uh, so Colin, this one's for you. I am not sorry for anything that I have ever done. I have never disrespected intentionally to, uh, I've never been disrespected intentionally to a man or a woman. God, that could be either of them. I'll reread yeah. it again. I'm not sorry for anything that I have ever done. I have never been disrespectful intentionally to a man or a woman feel like that's a Trump thing to say, but then I feel like I got to go with Biden. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm leaning towards Trump, but I'm going to go Biden. You are correct, sir. That is a Biden quote. Uh, Biden made the comment after a speech in Washington in April. And his first remarks after several women came forward to say that he had touched them inappropriately or made them uncomfortable. During the speech, he also joked twice that he had permission to hug a union leader and put his arm around a young boy. <laughs> Good Lord, Bloomberg. I didn't realize you were going to be so fierce on Biden. This is great. That was that was like his cookie after a long day. He <laughs> get to hug the boy. <laughs> I wonder if he sniffed him, too. I hope yeah, he's got a I, I do really well. They're going to let me smell his hair. <laughs> okay, so uh, next quote for you, GW. I punched my music teacher in the face because I didn't think he knew anything about music and I almost got expelled. I'm not proud of that, but it's clear evidence that even early on, I had a tendency to stand up and make my opinions known in a very forceful way. Uh, when I first heard it, I was going Trump, but <clears throat> towards the end made me go, that's definitely Biden. Incorrect, sir. That is Donald Trump. God damn it. Uh, Trump re <laughs> recounted an anecdote about a time in the second grade in which he gave his teacher a black eye in his 1987 book, The Art of the Deal, saying that he was, quote, a very assertive, aggressive kid in the 2016 interview. He downplayed the incident saying, when you're that age, nobody punches very hard. <laughs> uh, so Colin, back over to you. I can quote... <clears throat> I cannot believe that a Frenchman visiting Kiev went back home and didn't say he discovered the most beautiful women in the world. That's my observation. It's certainly, you have so many beautiful women. God, that sounds like Trump. But again, old pervy Biden could have said it. I'm going to go with Trump. And we are wrong again. That was Joe Biden. Uh, Biden made these remarks while speaking with Ukrainian president. I'm going to butcher this, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, Victor, oh, that one's not bad. Victor Yushchenko, during a 2009 visit, the two were overheard by a pool reporter while drinking Cokes in the back of a pub in Kiev with other local officials. It's unclear who the French person was. Who the fuck drinks a Coke in the back of a bar? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I've known some people. A 16-year-old. 
<laughs> uh, drink your Coke at the back of a bar. That's I'll tell you who, a 12-year-old. <laughs> did, did they run out of beer? Like, what? <laughs> uh, okay, GW. Uh, GW, you got the last one, right? We're back over, or Colin got the last one. We're back over. Yeah. Okay, uh, next quote. The press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish we were in high school. I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. Biden. That, sir, is a Joe Biden quote. Biden made the remarks while campaigning for Hillary in Pennsylvania in 2016. He was responding to the leaked, quote, Access Hollywood video in which Trump had boasted that he could, quote, grab women by the genitals because of his celebrity status. Uh, Colin, back over to you. I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests and I can tell you who is going to win. That was the entire quote. I'll read it again because it's real short. I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests and I can tell you who is going to win. Uh, we had the one that was before that GW got wrong on the IQ. That was Biden. He thought it was Trump. I'm thinking this one is Trump, but it could be Biden. Well, sir, is Donald Trump. Boom. Uh, Trump made the remarks during an interview with Forbes in 2017. He was reporting to reports when he called, quote, fake news, unquote. The Secretary of State Rex Tillerson had called him a moron after a meeting with his national security team. Uh, so we are at 2-3 GW Colin. I don't know how many questions we're in, but uh, we'll go a few more. Uh, nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. Uh, I'm just going to say Trump. You're correct, sir. And when I read that, I almost put the inflection on it because it was so like, nobody has had more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. <laughs> that's what i heard in my mind maybe like, abraham lincoln maybe abraham lincoln did but uh <laughs> trump made the response uh made the remarks during his third debate against clinton 2016 he was responding to her criticisms of treatment of women quote donald thinks belittling belittling woman makes him bigger she said trump's response sparkle uh sparks snickers leading moderator chris wallace to warn the audience to stay quiet Good Lord, he was moderating shitty <laughs> debates back then, too. <laughs> oh, God, I hope that guy gets fired before the next election. Uh, okay, uh, next quote. Uh, what I'm trying to do or, what I'm trying to do is go around town to town, and I'm drawing as big of crowds, bigger than anybody. Have you seen anybody draw bigger crowds than me here in the state? That's my boy, Donald J. Incorrect, sir. Ah. A, I know that's a shocker, dude. I almost put the Donald Trump inflection on it when I said it. Oh, but that was, in fact, Joe Biden. Biden made the remarks while campaigning in Iowa in August. Fox News reporter said Stephen Ducci then responded that he'd see bigger crowds in Des Moines, prompting Biden to respond. I know you're going to go after me no matter what. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But I noticed that you didn't ask me why I'm ahead in the polls still. So that was, yeah, that must have been last year. Uh, okay, we got a few more. Uh, score right now is 2 3, GW Colin. Uh, this next one is <clears throat> for you, GWs. It's packed outside, as you'll be able to see, but it's they've never seen crowds like this over here. Uh, I'm going to have to say Biden. Oh, and we're incorrect again. That one is Donald Trump. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Trump made the remarks after arriving in Indiana shortly before the 2018 midterm elections. I think we're doing very well in the Senate, he told reporters. There was something going on, okay? I'm just telling you, we all left Ohio together. You never saw crowds like this. Thousands and thousands of people outside. God, I can't even help it anymore. I'm just going into it. Uh, <laughs> it looks like we got like four more. <laughs> we might as well go for it. Uh, next quote for you, Colin. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. I'm not joking. Uh, holy shit. Oh, yeah, that one's fierce, dude. That, I, that, that, I wouldn't want to be, before anybody <laughs> snippets this show and takes that shit out of context, yeah. <laughs> this is a quote for me that the president is, or vice president. Is, yeah, it's either your president or your previous vice president. This <laughs> is supremely racist. 
So yeah. I'll reread the quote now that we've made some dialogue, but you cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. I'm not joking. I mean, it sounds like something Trump would say, but I feel like if Trump said it, he would be blasted so hard for it that like it would come out. So you just got to go with a senile old white man um, who probably buttered that up with something like uh, this. Just, and, and you know what? And I love the people there. I <laughs> love them all. <laughs> um, um, I'm going with Biden. OK, and you are correct. Colin, we're going on ahead. Uh, Biden made the remarks while talking with an Indian American supporter in 2006. Uh, the point Senator Biden was making it that there has been a vibrant Indian American community in Delaware for decades. Uh, so he was trying to uh, talk about how great diversity was by being racist to shit back in 2006. Uh, oh, we got three more. Okay, G Dubs, this one is for you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, when these people walk into the room, they don't say, oh, hello, how's the weather? It's so beautiful outside. How are the Yankees doing? They're doing wonderful. That's great. They say, we want deal. Oh, Trump. And you are correct, sir. Trump made the remarks while campaigning in Iowa in 2015. He also used broken English to imitate the accents of the leaders of South Korea and Japan while at a fundraiser in the Hamptons in August. The Washington Post reported that uh, reported that he has been known to affect uh, known to affect an Indian accent and imitate Indian Prime Minister uh, Narayana Modi, which means I am not good at taking on a fake Indian accent to placate my audience. Back over to you, Colin. We got two more. Uh, we're at four three. So uh, if Colin gets this, this seals the deal, and. Uh, uh, we could have a tie if uh, Colin Messi Debs gets the next one. So, Colin, for you, the, the weight of the game is hanging on your shoulders, sir. I know, don't get nervous. Uh, said, <clears throat> I promise you, you're going to see the single most important things that change America. We're going to cure cancer. I'll read it again. I got, I promise you, you're going to see the single most important thing that changes America. We're going to cure cancer. All right, again, that's that is a hard one. Um, that's right down the middle. I I know of Donald Trump of doing some serious bullshitting in his life, but I don't know if Donald Trump has ever proclaimed he was going to cure cancer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick that over to Joe Biden. And you are correct, sir. Biden made the remarks at a campaign event in Iowa in June. His oldest son, Bo, died from brain cancer in 2015, leading the then vice president to launch a cancer moonshot campaign to fight the disease. So, Colin sealed it, but G-Dubs will give you this last one up as redemption. Last quote. We will come up with the cures to many, many problems, to many, many diseases, including cancer. Uh, that'd be Trump. Yes, sir. We will come up with many cures to many, many problems, to many, many diseases, including cancer. Everybody agrees. It's great. Trump made the remarks at a rally in Florida in June, adding several other bold second term goals. We'll, we will eradicate AIDS in America for once and for all, and we're very close, he said. We will lay the foundation for landing American astronauts on the surface of Mars. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. We got a we got a three to five. Colin wins this round, so uh, we'll have to do a tiebreaker at some point in the future when we don't have a guest on. Absolutely, I think it's hilarious that uh, we we are making like those type of uh, like proclaiming that type of stuff. Like we're gonna kick cancer. We're gonna sit, you know send a man to the Mars. It's like you guys failed to get us mass. <laughs> Oh, Jason in the comments, fucking killer question from 15 minutes ago. We're going to have to field that one, sir. Thank you for watching. He says, if you guys could choose anyone for president, and I'm assuming he means anyone, uh, maybe bring in the two options if you have them uh, alive or dead. Uh, but if you were to choose anybody in the world to be president, who would it be? And... Uh, I'm going to have to ruminate on that for a minute. So we'll, 
I'll let you ruminate on that. We'll read the next the next comment. Unless you're ready, G Dubs. I'm ready. Okay. Well, well let's have I've waited for this answer all my life. Jesse Ventura. Oh. <laughs> I think if Jesse Ventura ran for president, I would completely vote for him. Over and over again. Hands down, I don't care what party he's on. I don't care what platform he's spouting. I would vote for Jesse Ventura. Fair enough. Uh, Colin, you have a response for that? Yeah. Um, honestly, I would have liked to have seen JFK finish out his presidency. I would have liked to have seen what would have happened if JFK hadn't been assassinated. I think that that was a real turning point in America, a real shift. So I think that would that would have been an interesting thing. Um, yeah, I um, I feel like there might be a lot less um, corruption in American politics had JFK actually gotten to do what he wanted to do. Yeah, and if you like, if you're a conspiracy theorist or like you're into like any of that stuff, like the actual things that like he was talking about very pro- plainly right before he was assassinated was pretty interesting. And he was talking about, you know, going after central bank and, and all of these sort of things. And, and a lot of the things we're addressing right now with <laughs> security and uh, right to privacy, right. And all of those sort of things, um, basic freedoms, basics, you know, things like that. He was quite aware of, and actually was spending, you know, making his life's work to try to expose a lot of that. So I think it would have been really interesting to have seen that, all have played out you know i i agree i think he was the original anti-deep state guy Mm -hmm. was uh was jfk trying to root out the corruption there and uh yeah yeah, it would have been amazing to see what he could have gotten done had uh he not been shot right um me personally i would say uh john wayne (laughs) be it would be great not the actor but the character of john <laughs> wayne just to see a guy walk out there and be like fuck you pilgrim <laughs> like just straight you know um and then uh yeah i think he would be my choice um you know, Jay, you know jason statham would make a good president um liam neeson uh you know basically any actor in hollywood that would play the president probably could do a good job as the president the guy from independence day exactly will smith would be a great president no i meant the guy who played the president in independence day he gave a great fucking speech uh, that's apparently all it takes anymore yeah (laughs) i was just thinking morgan freeman oh that would be great yeah, he'd be the out. voice of God as uh, as our president. I'm so excited to be talking to China. <laughs> I feel like he could really talk us into some horrible shit too, just because his voice is so lulling and calming. It really, really explain to us that we're just like going to invade multiple countries and would be all be like, I ran. Well, Morgan, I think that's a great idea. I think. Unfortunately, we have no choice. <laughs> but to unleash a nuclear holocaust on them in which the world has never seen. Wow, I never thought about it like that, but I agree. Let's, I'm, let's I'm, do it. <laughs> I've been, I've been uh, trying to do a Morgan Freeman. <laughs> kind of like a nasally sort of thing. Like, it's coming along, sir. It's coming along. <clears throat> We're getting there. Uh, we got another comment in here from Dolores the Pine Smith. She says, GW, it looks like you have a black shadow that comes up and looks like it's tapping you on the shoulder. Love you. Yeah, I do. It's so my light in my room went out. So it all I have are my lamps that I use to light myself, and everything's coming from my right. So it casts a shadow, like I need to get another lamp and put it over here so I can balance out the shadow. Oh, okay. Too lazy to do it right now. So that's it, why. That was great. It's kind of a callback to uh, Halloween, which was just Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I hope everyone had a great one, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. I don't know. Mine was kind of shitty. 
yes, I apologize. <laughs> yes, we did miss you. Um, you missed a packed audience at the show. It was great. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Fantastic. Never seen so many people at the mill. It's <laughs> record numbers. It was it was probably the greatest show that everybody's ever seen. Not definitely, maybe probably, but everybody agrees. <laughs> we were twenty five percent of five hundred percent. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, the numbers were big. Okay, uh, we all know that. Uh, well, we're almost at the end. You guys have anything you need to uh, get off your chests? Uh, not out of your chest, GW. I just want to be clear. Anything you want to uh, you want to wrap up before we get out of here? I'm good. I'm 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 fairly well wrapped right now. Okay, I'm uh, I'm waiting for next week when things hopefully fucking calm down a little bit, but I don't think they're going to. But it's really nice to think that maybe like November 5th and 6th would be, just, you know, like we can go back to just hating each other uh, uh, respectfully as, as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to what's going on now where I hop uh, online and people are like, those days are my friends list for six years, but you're a fucking scumbag. And I was like, dude, like the guy hung out of your house. <laughs> Like, like you've introduced them to your kids and like all of a sudden in the past six months you've gone from like i like this guy to like he's a fucking scumbag he supports blah 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 like oh get over yourself yeah well I, I, gotta be honest with you, I will not be going back unfortunately the cat's out of the bag and i'm just gonna keep throwing those cats uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, what it's so funny though is on the same time, I feel like <clears throat> there has been a no, I don't want to call it a melancholiness, but you know, there's just been kind of a hey, well, blah, blah, blah. and Americans, as much as we'd like to say, I would like to um, say this uh, in regards to the South, you know, and the Confederates, and they're trying to, you know. They, they've always been talks of another civil war or the Confederates wanted to rise up and all this stuff. Uh, all I have to say is if the Confederates want a piece of us in the North, you're going to have to come and get it up here. And let me tell you, my friend, today it was fucking freezing outside. <laughs> <laughs> like, my tactic is not even to have to like shoot these people. It's just to like out like survive them and just let them freeze their ass off in the north and be like, you know what? Honestly, this isn't worth it. Like <laughs> these northern Yankees are crazy. Like they think they're badass, but it's like, how badass can you be in Florida when it's literally beautiful every day? It's, it's like 70 degrees down there right yeah, now. Like, we, it, we woke up with four inches of snow. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and they're trying to say like how tough they are. It's like, where's the South? We're tough. It's like, yeah, we all know you're tough driving around with a tank top on. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I would put a tank top on, but unfortunately right now it's negative 30 below. And if I went outside without a fucking jacket on, I would be dead within 30 minutes. Like, <laughs> So uh, I'm just gonna bank that on that, you know what I mean? It's like it's like with like it's like a country like Russia. It's like you don't want to fuck with Russia. These people are already miserable and freezing. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. only drink so much vodka because that's the only way to stay warm. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> like, and, and they produced a great band like Slaughter to Prevail. I don't know if anybody's listened to them, but if you go listen to that guy's voice, you don't want anything to do with Russia. It's very uplifting music. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. But uh, with a voice like that, yeah, I, you, I was instantly like, you know, he's he's got that voice in an AK-47. I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm good. Everybody agrees. I should not somebody to fuck with. Okay, sorry. That's it. That's it on my Trump impressions tonight. <laughs> it's been fun, guys. Uh, Please follow Mr. GW Foley on uh, Facebook and Parlor and Instagram at Foley Kills. And uh, if I missed anything, let me know. I oh. have fun. Okay. Uh, and please follow Colin and uh, on Facebook and Instagram as well as the Woolen Milk Comedy Club. It's the greatest comedy club in Vermont, and everybody agrees. Uh, 
almost definitely, but definitely probably uh, is amazing. And uh, remember to follow me at Hickory TDAU on Instagram and Parlor and Facebook and YouTube and HickoryMagic.com, which is not great, but it's getting better. Magic. Yes, it's wonderful. And everybody agrees. Uh, please, everybody out there, uh, please remember to stay safe, uh, stay drunk, stay underwhelming. Uh, most importantly, stay fucking sane. And uh, please remember to uh, not hate each other because of their political decisions. Because uh, that's how we got here with the Revolutionary War. And we don't really want that shit again. So please, uh, you know, if you're a Republican, go out there and hug your liberal friend. And if you're a liberal, go out there and just don't spit at a Trump supporter, please. That would really be great for the future of our country. Uh, oh, we got la one, one last comment in before we go. Colin looks like he should have run for office. And I agree, Jason. That's fucking wonderful. Uh, he would be a great politician. Uh, Mr. Left, <laughs> Mr. More Left than Gandhi himself. <laughs> Uh, is probably what the people want. Gandhi had a lot to learn, you know? <laughs> he had a lot to learn. And unfortunately, I never lived to teach him everything. But but please, everybody, uh, stay safe, stay drunk, stay underwhelming. Most importantly, stay fucking safe. And we will see you guys next week. We'll be back on episode 29. Uh, will Pura from New York City is on next week. That should be fun. And we'll see you then. Everybody have a great night. Thank you.